I would now like to invite uh, Dr. André Laperriere for his opening remarks. Thank you very much. Um, for those that are less familiar with GODAN, the Global Open Data Initiative for Agriculture and Nutrition, I invite you to go to our website, godan.info. You'll find all kinds of exciting stuff there. But just in a nutshell, we were created, having in mind, we were created initially during one of the G7 uh, meetings that took place some years ago, when our world leaders started talking about to the horizon of 2050, saying that by, by now, we have around 800 million people around the world that are undernourished or malnourished. And if we don't do anything, if we don't change the way we do things, by 2050, we're gonna have two billion more in the same situation, so we have to do something. So we have to empower people. We have to give them the means, the tools, the ideas, the techniques, so that the untapped agricultural product production capacity that there is around the world can be fully exploited. So that's how we were created. Within the three years of our existence, we managed to rally more than 840 organizations, governments, international organizations, private companies, and others from 110 countries around the world, all united by this belief that by sharing knowledge and working together, we can innovate, we can do things differently and reach that level that will make the world better nourished and with a better quality of life. This is the, the good news. Now the bad news. I was um, already mentioned some that uh, unless we do something, I'll, I'll summarize there just so that we visualize it. This century alone, the world is going to have to produce as much food as the whole humanity did in the last 8,000 years. So when you think about it, that's, that's quite a lot. I was part, um, one of the guilty ones, I like data, we're about data, so because data is a, is a good mean, a good tool, first to store knowledge, to store information, and it's a good tool also to disseminate it, especially thanks to technology, you can send data, send information from one end of the world to the other end of the world in a matter of seconds. So, um, but nevertheless, I was one of the, the guilty ones, so to speak, uh, that went from the, that helped build the current SDGs, so moving from the MDGs to the SDGs. And I always remember the opening of the first meeting when partners from around the world were gathered to discuss how to do that. The first statement that was made was, okay, here's our goal. We're going to transform SDGs into MDGs, and in the process of doing that, one of our objectives is to make the system simpler. Simpler. Now we heard this morning, I'll just give you a little statistics, and again, uh, I am for data, so I'm not, I'm not uh, criticizing, but just so we, we visualize part of, the part of the challenge we had ahead of, have ahead of us. We learned this morning from the previous speaker that there are, if you take all the, uh, all the goals that are in the SDGs, uh, you have about 200, 242 indicators, right? In the world nowadays, there's somewhere around 208 or 205 countries. So if you want, if the UN, if the world wants to have an overall view as to how we're doing with the, uh, with the SDGs, and you multiply 208 by 242, you end up with somewhere around 40,000 indicators to monitor. And to be really accurate, each indicator is not one thing. Each indicator needs a number of data points that you need within each country. So you rapidly end up in the millions. So that's a, a massive amount of data that, that requires, but fortunately we have big data, we have lots of technology that can help do that. So the problem is more financial and, and, and human resources, and also the fact that some data doesn't, is not easily available or not available at all. So there's a number of complications. So since we are in 108, 110 countries now as of today, uh, we bump into all kinds of situations. Some countries are a little bit more advanced, more equipped, so they're, they're, they're way to uh, an overall view to SDGs is more developed, let's say, while some others are just starting. And one of the first questions is saying, well, what do we do? We, we need all these millions of data points and so many indicators, and what do we do? Well, my typical response is, okay, let's prioritize. What, what is the, 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 what are the burning problems in your countries? 
and let's focus on those. Because one of the things with SDGs uh, or with indicators in general is that they're very important because if you want to know where you're going, you need to know what your starting point is. Or better, you need to know where you're coming from. So that's one of the complexity of the things. But uh, fortunately, a number of tools that are very action-oriented have been developed as a complement, if you will, to the SDGs, so that if you work with these tools in one way or another, you're going to contribute to implement the SDGs. I'm thinking there are many of those, but I'm thinking of the Food Security Index, for example, uh, which has been developed by one of our partners, Barilla, in addition with The Economist. It is a very action-oriented uh, uh, index that demonstrates a num number of things. One thing that it demonstrates is that food security, or nutrition security, rather, is not only the privilege of the rich. It can be, you can make a lot of progress if you put your priorities at the right place, even in countries that are less fortunate than others. Uh, currently, the food security index doesn't cover all the countries. It covers about 35, if I recall. So, uh, One of the richest is the UAE. And again, it's not a criticism, it's just a comparison. According to the food security index, the UAE, which has a GDP per capita of around 74,000 people, thousand dollars per person, 74,000, it's quite a bit. They're 34 on the list of 35 in terms of position. If you take Ethiopia with a GDP of about $1,800 per person, which is much less than the UAE, they're in position 12. So why is that? Because maybe they have some of their priorities right. So, and they base on some of their priorities based on the data that they have. Because data itself doesn't do anything. It's what you do with data that makes a difference. Thank you. Um, I hope later I'll have a few examples of what people do with data because they do miracles nowadays. And you don't need to deal with 40 million indicators. You just need to prioritize and be really focused as to what you want to do. Because you, me, you, and everybody, we can all contribute to make a difference and allow the SDGs to be implemented thanks to data-driven policies that we all should push for. Thank you. Thank you, André. I promise you there will be a follow-up question to you on big data, so you will have another opportunity. The importance of big data uh, to be part of the priorities and to use it uh, in the right place to empower people to untap agriculture production by having knowledge to make the world better nourished with a better quality of life. That's a beautiful, noble cause. So I'm happy that we heard from you, uh, André.